The game's first memory is of you and your mum at the beach. It's a calm scene, it's happy, peaceful, it's all these positive words, but it's surrounded by this blackness, this void. Because it's a memory, it's imperfect. You see that big spiky plant over there? That's called Nagave. And then you blink. And suddenly you're in home and you're placing your handprint onto a piece of paper. It's your first bit of art. It's a happy moment. And then you blink. And you're in history class, some lecture about historical figures and some quotes they said. But then the girl next to you passes you a note. It's a cute note. You like it. She asks for you to tell her the answer, so you do. So those who do not remember the past... And then the teacher calls you both out. That's right, right? Indeed it is. Though I prefer you to answer without the help of your... And then you blink. It sneaks up on you. You're immersed in this world and the memory. And then the involuntary muscle reaction of blinking catches up to you. And well, you just have to deal with it. Because if you don't, if you linger, you miss the next memory and the next and the next and the next. But in that moment, that moment was the present. It's all there was. You probably didn't know you were actually making a memory. It was a thing that just happened. It was a day and then it ended. Maybe that day was the best day of your life. But now it's just a memory filled with void. Because you aren't in that history class. You haven't been for a very long time. You're in the future. You're explaining your life to someone who is going to plead your case and try to earn you a ticket to the afterlife. And well, memory isn't perfect. It's a faulty camera. It doesn't know what's important. Some details are fuzzy, while others are as clear as they were in the moment. It remembers the oddest things, the taste of a sandwich you had nearly 10 years ago. But then it will just forget the face of a loved one. And then you blink again, and you're playing your first chord on the piano. Your mum's proud. You blink. You're in the bath. Parents talking, but it's foggy. The boat is just more important, frankly. And then you blink. The boat really is important. You blink again. You envision the boat in paint form, but it comes out broken. You're only young. It'll get better. You blink again. Your mum tells you about her dad. You blink again. Your first pet. So when asked by the orator, the bean pleading your case, how can you answer his question? How can you answer if Benjamin was a lonely or a happy kid? How can you answer that truthfully? Well, you can't. You simply don't know all the facts. And like, hell, how, how am I meant to answer that? Was I a happy or lonely kid? And I don't know. I'm not old. I'm 20. And I, I can't answer that. I have fresh memories when I was a kid, but I can't answer that. I remember the first time I shat in a toilet, but I can't remember if I was happy back then. Remember making my first friend? Can't remember his name. Remember my childhood pets, but it's just what they look like. It's not them. It's not who they were. I remember the cars my dad used to drive before we sold them to make rent that week. I remember a lot of stuff, but it's not enough to answer those types of questions. Not honestly, not truthfully. I could say that I was a happy kid, but that would be ignoring the times I came home from school not wanting to exist anymore. I could say I was lonely, but that isn't true either. I had friends, I had a family who cared. But maybe I'm missing this crucial fact that could you know, unanimously pen me as a happy or lonely kid. But I don't know, I just can't remember anything like that, so how am I meant to know? I know that when I get older, I definitely won't be able to answer that question. I know I'll forget a lot when I get older. I might forget everything. The script, my childhood pet, I just buried a couple weeks back. My friends. And I think that's what this game is ultimately about. It's about memories. It's about deciding and rectifying them. What was true? What was false? What did you make up? Did you invent some lie when you were a kid that is now cemented in your mind as irrefutable fact? And this is going to be a little bit off bait off brand for a channel called conversing games but i want to talk about a movie now i want to talk about richard linklater's boyhood a film made over 12 years following a young boy turned adult it's a fictionalized story but the actors are all the same from the first second to the last second of the movie it's impressive the pure technical and creative effort that goes into shooting a movie over the course of 12 years and still having it make sense but the most important part to me, and to this video as a whole, is that the movie doesn't make a big deal out of its premise. It doesn't stop or remind you that this was a just was shot over 12 years, it just kind of exists. If anything, it doesn't want you to know that. 
You watch someone grow up in real time. You watch technology change. You watch how someone develops. And it's kind of weird to me. Because the kid in the movie, well, the man in the movie nowadays, was six when production started in 2001. I was born in 2001. But it feels like I, I could apply so many of these films' details to my own life. Mason Evans goes from innocent child to college student. It's a timeline that a lot of people commit to, and it's one that I committed to. I'm literally in uni right now, and I can relate to a lot of this film. And this movie is based around the idea of fleeting moments, same as Before Your Eyes, effectively. They both just keep moving. The only difference is, is that one is interactive, but they just keep cutting or blinking forward in time. Boyhood kind of just blends together. It doesn't really make a big deal out of itself. It just keeps moving. Sometimes the, the changes in age of Mason just don't interface with my brain. He just ages in front of me and not... Like, nothing really changes, but he is older. But it's not like it is in a movie movie. His parents don't die in a car crash or get killed by terrorists. We don't really see any big events. It's very much about these paratopic spaces. About these aftermaths of an important event. There's no first kisses, no high school graduates, just the drive home. And when big things happen, they aren't big to the character's narrative. They're just exciting moments or memories, I guess. The home run of the baseball game feels so spontaneous and exciting. It really defines itself within the film as a big moment because, well, it is to Mason. It, it was probably the highlight of that week, and when it's a good memory, it, it sticks. And after this movie, I can't answer that question. I can't answer if Mason was a happy or lonely kid. Because boyhood just keeps going regardless of what you do, because it's a movie. You can pause it, but that's kind of separate from the film. But, you know, regardless, you're missing stuff. It's an imperfect experience of memory. It's missing whole months, days, hours, important decisions. And, well, so is Before You Rise. The best part of Before Your Eyes is when the orator tells you you've been hiding something. Now don't think that I haven't dealt with people like you. You're ashamed of something. Something so terrible, you're trying to blink right past it. Because if the gatekeeper knew, she'd have to dream up fresh new hells to punish someone as worthless as you. And I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're the rottenest soul that I ever fished out of that black muck. Because it comes out of nowhere, and yet... You, you know almost instinctively that you have been hiding something. What did you have to close your eyes from? What didn't Ben want to remember? What was the ugly truth? And spoilers here, like major spoilers if you haven't played the game. This video is not worth spoiling this game. Play the game, then come back. The game's so much worth more than this video. Yeah, so... Watch it, come back, play it, come back. Capiche? Capiche. Because, well, basically, in the game, there's these little sections where the game tells you to shut your eyes and it won't progress until you do that. If you open your eyes, the game tells you to shut them again. It's the complete opposite of what the game has told you this far, and it feels so wrong to do. It takes everything away from you. The player, the entire art form of gaming just slips away and it melts in your hand. It turns to mist. Because, well, your input, the very thing that controls the game, your interaction with it, is to simply not do anything. It is to close your eyes and wait. And it has a very important narrative reason. Because, well, Ben doesn't want to remember something. He's hiding something from himself, the orator, and the player. Something massive. We know at this point that Benjamin was sick as a child. We know that he got past it. It took a year of his life to do so, but he did. And then he went on to create these award-winning artworks. He outlived both his parents, he did amazing things, and he met his childhood crush, Chloe, again. But, well, that never happened. Benjamin is an 11-year-old sick kid, it turns out. He's got some sort of disease. And Benjamin just never lived long enough to create the artwork that we've seen, or to meet Chloe again, or to even outlive his parents. And it begins to invade his vision, this red, angry mess that pulsates and buzzes. A parasite in your vision, digging and digging into the neurons that form Ben's entire being. Benny! Benny! Ben! Oh God, can you hear me? Richard! And it grows bigger and bigger every time you blink.
You soon catch on that Ben isn't getting better. I want to give you something. But I think I don't want to be in the room when you see what it is. So maybe if you close your eyes, I can give it to you and I'm going to leave. Close your eyes now, okay? You try not to blink to stay in that moment, but alas, you have to. It's involuntary, it's inevitable. Ben is going to die and you can't do anything about it. You just have to keep blinking. Each blink sends you days, weeks, months into Ben's future, closer and closer towards the end. These red angry tendrils grow bigger and bigger every time. Ben, probably struck with the knowledge that he isn't getting better, begins to write himself into a story. A story about himself, but somehow more than himself. Well, more than he was in that moment, and more than he ever was indeed, ever. He begins to write an extension to his life, a fictionalised account of his future. One where he doesn't die. One where he grows up. One where he attends his parents' funeral. One where he pursues his dreams. And that's the story that Ben tells the orator. Ben needs to tell the truth. Was Ben a happy kid or a lonely one? Was Ben's mother encouraging or demanding? And you know you can't answer it, but you have to. You have to decide right there and then what life Ben has lived. Do you pin Ben as lonely because the last year of his life was stricken by illness, or was he happy because he had a best friend? What event defines Ben? What event defines your life, my life? What event makes you decide your entire childhood was lonely or happy? The real danger here isn't actually being able to pick, but having to pick an option, because that comes to the way you actually remember it. Changing your memories is a binary choice. Memory is imperfect, but imperfect memories should not be replaced with vague generalizations, which often tell less of the story than the fractured memories you do have. Because, well, neither Before Your Eyes or Boyhood offer an objective view on their respective main characters, and neither do your memories, and that's the truth. You will have memories in the back of your head that didn't happen, or didn't happen the way you thought they did. You've probably forgotten some massive events, and sure, it hurts to entertain the thought that you've forgotten part of your life, but the ugly truth of it all is that forgetting is a necessary thing when it comes to the one most deniable thing. Time. Because you, you can't spend your life thinking about what you could have done or did do. In the short term, sure, entertain it, it's healthy in the moments after, but not years down the line, it just isn't. I know we all have that one thing we could change, an awkward conversation or a massive mistake. But the thing is we can't time travel, we can't change it. We can only acknowledge it and move on. We can blink forward and experience the moment, but don't look back and wish you could stay there because you can't. And every time you go back, it'll be foggier and foggier than the last time, but that's okay because that's a biological truth. You can't run from it, you can't change it. That's just how our brains work, how our memories work. It's not perfect, but it's what we have ultimately. The faulty camera in our brains, as it's put, I guess. And as you get older, each moment is shorter and shorter. A second back in primary school felt like a lifetime, but now it feels like, well, less than a second. And this isn't some pretentious thing, it's a raw, unfiltered scientific fact that as we age, we experience time faster. The second is not the same length as a second even a year before, it's faster. And that's why your teenage years stand out so much, because they felt so much longer than your 20s or your 30s did. And that's something I've struggled with. I feel like I've aged a millennia since I left high school at the end of 2019, but in reality, it's only been two years. But my god, it feels so much longer. Maybe that's the pandemic. Or maybe that's because I am older, but I simply don't know. I can't answer that question, no matter how much I think about it. Was I a happy kid? And I won't, because, well... My memory is imperfect, it's faulty, it's broken, it's untrustworthy. So I won't, I, I won't be answering that question. I won't retroactively just dictate that my life was lonely or happy, because I know that logically it was both, but it was neither. It's a question that infers a objective analysis of time, that we have an innate ability to remember every detail of memory and to be able to contextualize it to both the present moment, the past and the future, but we just don't. I can't answer that question. 
and maybe you can you so we just won't answer it we'll just keep writing to google docs and making videos on youtube.com because it's a way to you know journal our thoughts on a topic a digital time capsule for years to come and i hope i can look back at this video in a decade and still understand the person i was that in part that's kind of what my game reviews have been and the odd video essay here and there it's all about trying to understand myself my tastes what i actually love doing like, is it video games? Is it making videos? Is it studying film? Or is it something else I haven't discovered yet? It all pelts me to hopefully look back in this moment in 40 years and go, okay, that's what I was thinking. But will it be an objective analysis? No, but it doesn't need to be. I just want to remember for longer. Just let me remember what happens for as long as I can. I don't want to forget. I don't want to remember what my life was or could have been or should have been. My friends, my cat, my siblings, my parents, I just don't want to forget.